fellow citizens and residents, I come to you now because in July 1995, in a time-honored exercise that has served mankind well, petitions and divisions of all persuasions made their way to the polls. And there, in free and fair elections, you expressed your wish for the Senkitz Nevis Labour Party to assume responsibility for the protection and advancement of our country and our people. This was a sacred and serious responsibility then, and it remains a sacred and serious responsibility today. For the trust that you repose in us, and for your continuous support and prayers, we sincerely thank you. July being our anniversary month, therefore, I thought it would be a good idea for us to reflect on the road that we have traveled together, as well as to raise our eyes to look collectively at where our current path will lead us. Our country in 1995, you may remember, was different in many ways. We had endured a number of crises that had brought a degree of international focus and disrepute from which we all yearned to be free. And so this government set out in a spirit of inclusion and discipline to restore the international image of St. Kitts and Nevis as focused, stable, and well-managed. We set out to put in place the types of policies and programs that would expand the options and opportunities available to Kittitians and divisions of all socioeconomic levels, changes that would enhance their potential for upward mobility and deliver to them greater material security. Because we believed then, as we believe now, that the best life is a life in which there are options, choices, and expanding possibilities. In so many ways, life was more difficult for petitions and divisions when we came into office than it is today. Over the 15 years before we came into office, few of our nationals were given the opportunity to own homes or land. Since 1995, over 3,000 low-income and middle-income families are now proud homeowners, and thousands more, including farmers and hundreds of young people, now own or occupy a piece of the rock. This is what we mean by expanding opportunities. Our students, or nationals needing to quickly get to relatives abroad, or businessmen needing to transact business in a timely and efficient manner, had a far more difficult time doing so. There was no way for any of us to get easily to major cities for purposes of school, family matters, or business. Perhaps it did not matter that much at that time, since very few of our young people were being given loans to travel abroad to study. So there was no need for them to be able to move back and forth efficiently. In the next 15 years alone, we provided some 1,776 student loans to this country's young people. This is what we mean when we talk about expanding options. Another reason the country could have zero direct flights to major cities before we formed the government was that there were practically zero international organizations choosing St. Kitts and Nevis 
as the site for annual meetings, summits, and conferences. Being able to get to and from the Federation was therefore not that important. Not even one hotel was built during the 15 years prior to 1995. And so, knowing that the infrastructure had not been put in place to make the Federation competitive in the international travel market, we again moved to put the policies and programs in place to attract the kind of international traffic that has enabled so many large businesses, small entrepreneurs, taxi drivers, and other service and product providers to dramatically increase their revenue flows and significantly enhance their material security. There are now direct flights to Miami, New York, Atlanta, and London. Today, the St. Kitts Marriott Resort is a major international conference center. And quite recently, we witnessed the groundbreaking ceremony for the Park Hyatt Hotel. In terms of our ongoing day-to-day well-being as a people, however, I am particularly pleased with the strides that we have made in the area of health. Since assuming office, every single health center has been refurbished. New ones have been built. The Joseph N. France Hospital was rebuilt, and a brand new Parkson Hospital opened its doors. Both institutions deliver a level of care that was previously unknown. The Mary Charles Hospital will soon be rebuilt in similar fashion to Parkson. Most significantly, government employees from the most senior and influential to the most junior and inexperienced now have comprehensive and free government-provided health insurance covering eye, dental, mental health, surgical, air ambulance, overseas specialists, and other forms of care. And the details are now being put in place that will result in every single national of St. Kitts and Nevis being provided with health insurance similar to that now being enjoyed by every public employee. How better to expand the life chances of the Federation's men, women, and children than to make certain that regardless of any illness that may befall them, they would have access to the medical care that they need? And what better way to enhance our people's sense of material and emotional security than to ensure that never again would one's property have to be sold, or loans desperately sought, or life savings depleted in order to pay for sudden and chronic illnesses. Indeed, when we assumed office, our ambulances were really glorified taxis or buses. There was nothing that ambulance attendants could do to aid those on the way to the emergency room. We, however, made it a priority to ensure that those attendants are now highly trained paramedics, capable of providing a range of vital medical services as they take patients to and from the emergency room. In other words, capable of making the difference between life and death, thus saving many lives. As a government, we believe that if you do it unto the least of these, my brethren, you do what is right in the sight of God. So there is the home assistance program for the elderly. Crossing guards take care of our children's safety on the roads. Programs for teenage moms. Assistance to children whose parents are incarcerated. And foster care for those who are without families. Empowering women has been continuously pursued since 1995. Today, more than 50% of our permanent secretaries 
are women and in ministries previously led only by males. Finance, sustainable development, and national security. Women are the leaders in offices and institutions for the very first time. Social security, director of public prosecution, head magistrate, controller of inland revenue, the head veterinarian, and drum major, to name a few. And we have ambassadors who are women for the first time, four of them at the moment. Freedom and democracy reigns as never before. When the prime minister makes a television broadcast, people can choose to listen or not to listen. Prior to 1995, when the prime minister made a television broadcast, all other channels were blocked from airing any other program at that time. Anti-government calypsos were banned prior to 1995. Now calypsonians are free to sing songs against the government and have their songs aired as it should be. This government continues to issue licenses to radio stations who are free to air programs that criticize the government. Democracy is alive and well in St. Kitts and Nevis. There is so much that I could talk about as we look back, now that our anniversary month is upon us once more. But there is so little time. I began by talking about our determination when we assumed office to convey to the world the image of a focus stable and well-managed government and this we have done our debt is down as a result of very hard work and quantifiable results or senkits and nevis is now classified as a high income country the imf that most harsh judge of world economics has consistently rated our performance highly Investor confidence is up. Of the 54 member nations in the Commonwealth, our Prime Minister, of our very tiny but unquestionably blessed and respected nation, has been asked to chair an international committee, the mandate of which is the analysis of debt and development in small states, in order that as a result of this effort, they too may be able to chart constructive paths forward as we have done under his leadership. Do we intend to forever be burdened like some of the world by our dependence on fossil fuels? No. That is why St. Kitts and Nevis is the first and only OECS nation to be manufacturing solar panels for domestic use as well as the export market. That is why the Robert Llewellyn Airport is well on its way to being completely solar powered. As is, you will have noticed, increasingly the case with our roads and highways, as well as our decision to place solar panels on affordable homes. This is your government at work to address the high cost of electricity in the short term through reductions in fuel surcharge and in the medium and long term through alternative energy. So much to say, so little time. You are already aware of all that we have been doing to ensure that St. Kitts Nevis is not left behind in this increasingly technological age. You know of our information and technology training programs you know about our decision to provide our students with laptops, which is really the same as placing a computer in every home. You are aware of all of these things and what they mean for the possibility of e-commerce, web-based entrepreneurship, the competitiveness of our young people when new companies are in need of tech-savvy young people with whom to establish mutually beneficial relationships. Finally, we are almost out of time, but the nations of Europe, reeling with high levels of unemployment 
and the level of economic stagnation that is causing real anxiety have been berated by Europe's powerhouse, Germany, for not having been sufficiently forward-thinking to have introduced the types of apprenticeship programs and skills acquisition programs that would have expanded skill sets across Europe and expanded the options open to the people of Europe in general and the young people of Europe in particular. I couldn't help but smile when I read that, for that is exactly what we here in St. Kitts and Nevis have been doing and will continue to do in form of the PEP program that involves over 2,000 young people. That is what we mean by expanding options and expanding possibilities and opportunities that are available to the people of this land that we all love. So we are on a good path, a positive path, and a constructive path. Please join us in the week ahead as we celebrate this anniversary. We begin today, July 1st, at 7.30 p.m. at the Anglican Church Hall, better known as the Old Girls School on Victoria Road. There, we will have our July 2013 face-to-face, -face, at which, in keeping with previous face-to-face -face sessions, members of the St. Kitts Nevis Federal Cabinet will bring the nation up to date on matters of import and significance and answer any questions that you may have. We warmly invite you to join us. And our week's activities will end appropriately with a service of thanksgiving on Sunday, 7th July, at the Rivers of Living Water Christian Center at Lime Keel at 9 a.m. Additional details of the week of activities are published in the newspapers, aired on radio, and can be accessed at sknlaborparty.com or Senkit's Young Labor on Facebook. As I said a few minutes ago, we are on a good path, a positive path, a constructive path. And this has been made possible solely as a result of the faith and confidence that you have reposed in this government, which has in turn made it possible for us to move forward, striving as always, and striving as we always will, for the good that we can do. We do not take your support for granted. Once again, we say heartfelt thanks. God bless.